All right, guys, so welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to show you the difference between the new hack motion and the old hack motion. And for those who don't know what hack motion is, I'm going to show you what you can use this device for. So basically the hack motion is just a device that you can put it on your wrist and connect it to your phone or your iPad or Android device. And basically it will tell you the angles on your wrist on your address position at the top of your backswing and on impact and basically you can gather some data there you can compare the data and you can work on your progress it will show you how much you're extending how much you're flexing and it will give you some pointers on what you have to do so basically if you're extending a lot it will tell you that you're doing it by 10 degrees, two degrees. Basically, this is the old version and this is the new version. So this is the old one. And basically what you have to do, you got to wrap it around your glove and then pull it in like this. If you bought the old hack motion and now obviously there's a new hardware, uh, you can get this for free. All you have to do is just upgrade. So if you have the basic version, you are gripped to the plus version and you will get this for free. Or if you have the plus version and if you want to go to the pro version, you do the upgrade and then you will get this for free. Let's look at the new hack motion. I like the hard case, definitely handy. You open it up and this is what you see basically. Uh, it's virtually the same thing. It's just a little more uh, solid, a little more sturdy, I would say. You can charge it up here. You have this right here, they have the instructions. So basically with a new one, you just have to adjust these things right here, the straps. If you got a smaller hands, just make it a longer or shorter you have the core the plus and the pro now with the core you get some basic data as to your flexing or your extending and then you have some parameters there and it will some tips some feedback with the plus data you have a little more info and you have for me which is the most important thing is the ulnar deviation and radial deviation so my suggestion for me is to get the the plus package a lot of people think that you want to flex like this like dustin johnson and i tried that trust me for many years and it never worked and i only started playing better when i started doing all the deviation so basically all it is is going down like this put your wrist down right here i made so many videos on it and basically when you put your wrist down like this you do all the deviation uh, you can't really extend. You can't really go this way. It's kind of restricted. You can flex, but it's, it's going to be restricted. It's going to be difficult to, to extend. So that's going to be good in, in general terms. And ultimately, you're going to start flexing, which is what you really want to do. So with the plus version, you're going to see how much ulnar deviation you can do. And you can actually compare it to what pros are doing. So make sure to download the latest software, calibrate the unit by going like this and going up. And then after that, it's simple. There's a lot of instructions on the app. So now once you have it calibrated, you can see that everything I do here, it's in there, right there. So what I was, what I was talking about earlier is like doing this movement right here. That's what I want to do right here. Instead of doing the flexion, see, it will tell you flex. You can see that there's a lot of flexion. This is extension. But this right here is actually ulnar deviation. And look at that, it automatically give me, gives me flexion. It's very hard to do ulnar deviation and extension. Look at that. I'm trying to do extension, but it's, I'm still flex. So that's what I'm saying. I think for me, it was more successful to try to do ulnar deviation, which all it is is putting your wrist down. And ultimately what you want to do is wrist up, radial deviation, and then ulnar deviation. Okay, so I have a 9 iron and like I said, I'm not thinking of doing any flexion. I'm thinking of doing ulnar deviation going down like this on my downswing. So I'm going to take a shot just to show you and get some readings. Okay, let's have a look at that. Top within range and impact plus two extended. So basically from the top, to impact, I actually flex my wrist. That went just a little bit to the to the left. Okay, so I'm gonna give you some shot tracer, and basically all I'm doing is trying to do ulnar deviation, radial and ulnar, and that is automatically gonna make me flex, and it's gonna prevent me from doing extension. So I have a nine iron. Target is the yellow flag there. All right, that was sweet. Just a little bit to the right 
and actually that got me uh, address plus 28 at the top plus 30 extended and on impact plus 12 uh, extended so the motion from from my top of the max swing to the impact was flexion and I wasn't thinking about flexion I was thinking about doing ulnar deviation so let me make this clear if you are extended on the top of your backswing and then you're still extended on impact but the extension here is less than here so let's say you're extended at 30 but you're extended at 10 here that means that the motion was flexion so that's what counts so don't get me wrong you don't have to be flex on your impact position as long as your the motion from the top of your backswing to the impact is a, a, a flexion motion then you're good okay so basically this is what you get with the core version you can go in the shot list and you can analyze that uh, that um, information the data so at address how much extended you are at address how much extended you are at the top and how much extended you are on Im uh, at impact and you can also see the consistency you know if you're always addressed at the same uh, degree like for me I'm getting consistent and even addressing the ball at the same time so if you at the same uh, uh, position so basically if you see like 45 and then you see 24 and then you see 15 then that means that every time you're addressing the ball with a wrist, wrist angle that is different uh, and so that can be good so you have to be constant on your wrist on your address position then at the top the same thing you know you can see that the average is like 25 26 and then on impact it varies a little bit depending on the shot as well uh, i think the more i do all the deviation the, the more I, I compress the ball and the straighter the shot so this is what you get with the just the basic the core version now uh what i was saying before with the plus version you're going to see the ulnar deviation so if you're you want to get more into detail you would actually see how much it will tell you how much ulnar how much of this you're doing and how much of that you're doing so like i say on your takeaway you want to do radial and then on your downstream you want to do ulnar and that's what you will see with the uh, plus version and then the pro version you get everything potting and everything so we're going to go into potting and stability we're going to select right-handed uh, let's recalibrate so it's in position like this you go like this in position and then we raise it up to here and then we say it is in position and then it's done so we do a start practicing and this is what we're going to see we're going to see all our deviation and extension and that's what I'm looking for. I want to see how much ulnar deviation I'm doing on my putting. Um, this is working for me so good. So going down like this, it kind of locks my my uh, my wrist and it won't allow me to move it. So let's take a few putts and let's see what it says. Okay. Oh, that was almost perfect there. And it says on target. So, wow. What is that? It says uh, zero owner and 12 extension. That's great. And I felt like I was doing all deviation. So that means I was actually doing radio, which is not what you want to do in the putting. Okay, let's do another one. Okay, it's pretty good, it's just slightly left. Let's look at the ulnar radial. I did a little bit too much ulnar. So basically, my issue was that I was doing too much radial. And if I do too much radial, I feel like I'm gonna miss right. And if I do too much ulnar, I'm gonna miss left. So I gotta do just the right amount. Okay, this felt really good. Let's have a look. And it says uh, radial, so a little bit too much radial, so a little more ulnar. So as you can see, there's many features, a lot of data that you can gather with this uh, hack motion. And this is the new version, so it's gonna be a little more stable. I can tell you that it's easier to put on. It stays more in place. The older version for me was fine too. It was just a little more difficult to try to get it in place this is definitely perfect and you can use the hack motion as you can see depending on the version you get for putting you can use it to analyze your data uh, for me 
again, I keep saying this over and over, but the owner deviation, even on the potting, is amazing. It's working for me, and I encourage you guys to try to do that. Try to look into that. I think if you're uh, very into data and numbers, this is for you. You can definitely work on something. Uh, the main thing, remember, from the top of your backswing to impact. Remember what you have here and what you have here, and you can work on that. It takes time but you will definitely get there. Uh, for me, it worked by doing all the deviation. Uh, try to do that. It's what Deschambault is doing, and it's, look at him, it's working for him. So try to put your wrist down on your downswing and wrist going up on your uh, takeaway. So guys, that was just a review of the new hack motion. I hope you enjoyed that. Make sure to leave a like, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure to do so. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time.